Welcome back, Shalligators. We have some news that, I don't know, maybe you saw coming, I didn't. Lindsay Lohan is married. She's married. This is fine, I'm fine. It's, it's all fine. <laughs> We're gonna break this down. What do you think about this? And overwhelmingly, the topic was how to get your shit together and move on with your life. Move on from a messy past, find love, and yeah, get your shit together. So that's what we're gonna talk about because Lindsay Lohan is married. I'm fine. But before we unpack this burgeoning existential crisis, I just wanna remind you guys to sign up for Alpha Academy, The Sexy Sessions. It is a four part live stream event I am doing with Moment House. They do events with Justin Bieber, Halsey, Black Bear. I mean, if you know, you know. It's going to be so much fun. We're kicking it off July 21st. So every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, we're going to dive deep into some aspect of hooking up. We're basically rounding the bases. We're starting with kissing, week two is hand jobs, week three is oral, and week four is sex. And I'm going to be answering your questions questions live on the broadcast. I'm going to be answering your questions. I'm going to be going through like the basics all the way into like advanced techniques. So, you know, even wherever you are in your sexual journey and there is no wrong answer. If you're a virgin who's never kissed anyone, great. If you are like a high level seductress, you can learn some stuff too. So it's going to be super fun. Tickets are super cheap. They're only 10 bucks a session. Go ahead and click the link down below to join and be sure to sign up for the Pillow Talk After Party where I'm going to be answering your questions live, questions that might pop up during the broadcast. But if you have questions you want me to answer during the main live stream, you can leave it in the little chat feature on my homepage there. And yeah, I'm going to be taking note of all of those things so that we can like really dive deep into all of this stuff. There's going to be demos, but it's all going to be like safe for work. Like there's not going to be like wieners flying in and out or something. You know, you know, I keep it classy. Don't worry about that. So I'm really excited to have you guys join me. There's already several thousand people signed up. So it's going to be, it's going to be a sexy party. It's going to be a sexy party. Also, what is going to be a party is our trip to Italy. I've been forgetting to kind of like remind you guys about this, but we're doing another trip to Italy next April. We're going to Venice, Milan, Lake Como. We're bringing a photographer. It's going to be super aesthetic or aesthetical. It's molto atletico. So it's going to be such an amazing, fun trip. We have, I think, eight slots left. The trip will sell out. So go ahead and sign up at the link down below and join me. Let's be best friends. Because we end up, like, we all end up best friends on these trips. It's wild. Also wild. Mary. Lindsay, Lindsay's married. Okay. We just kind of talk, tackled this, excuse me, on the podcast recently of, like, how to be happy for your friends when good things happen to them, which sounds so bitchy, but we all know what this is like. When your friend is checking some sort of life box, you know, and the big one is always engagement or babies, right? Like, because that's what society conditions us to want. That's what society tells us is a marker of success for a woman, not for a man. They can be a bachelor forever, it's no big deal. We, I mean, you're alpha females as well. Like, you, I'm sure you get, no matter which lane you're in, if you're a wife and a mom, it's like, Oh, so you just, so you just like don't work? You know, you get that judgment. I, as a career woman, it's like, ah, no kids. How come? Just lucky, I guess. So it's hard when we see people sort of checking these boxes, even if we don't want it for ourselves, but it's like, okay, okay. Got it. And that box is different for all of us. And like I said, I mean, I think the marriage slash babies one is kind of universal because we're conditioned to have it be universal. But maybe the thing that makes you go, huh, okay. Maybe you see someone on your feed who's spending a month in France this summer randomly and you're like, what? Or somehow somebody made VP at their company and you're still slaving away in the lower level and you're like, Okay. Okay. No, I got it. That's fine. That's fine. I get it. That's fine. I'm fine. I'm fi I said I'm fine. It's really, really tough to deal with, but I really go into it a lot deeper on the podcast. It's called Girl on Top. It's free. Any place you find podcasts, Spotify, iTunes, whatever that might be. And I think it was two weeks ago. And so I kind of give you some tips on like how to process these emotions because yeah, like when I heard this about Lindsay Lohan, it fucked me up. Not that I want to be married. And that's what, that's what really fucks with your head. It can be something you don't even want, but you're still like, she has it though. Got, got it. 
Got it. There was this tweet that went around. And every time I see it again, like I crack up, it was like a girl I knew from second grade who thought she was a horse and used to eat grass at recess is married and I'm not much to think about. <laughs> and I always go back to that, like much to think about. So it fucks you up whether you want it or whether you don't. I almost think it fucks you up more if you don't, because I don't, I don't know why. Do you guys feel this way? Am I like making any sense? You know, sometimes I don't. So she's engaged to this guy, Bader Shamas. I'm probably not saying, is it Bader or is it Bader? He's Kuwaiti. And they met in Dubai, where she's been living since 2014. <clears throat> what has she been doing in Dubai? You know, um, I keep it too classy to say. But if you want to discuss in the comments what a girl might be doing in Dubai, what a wash-up celebrity might be doing in Dubai. The world's oldest profession. You know what? Good, good for you. Good for you. I can't give it away sometimes. I always say, if you can charge for it... But like I said, there seems to be an interesting trend of like very messy celebrities marrying dudes from the Middle East, like Lindsay. Jenna Jameson married an Israeli guy. Didn't Trisha Paytas marry an Israeli guy? Oh, and her videos about, it's like trying Jew food for the first time. Like, Jew food? Trisha, girl, you, <laughs> bless her heart. I know that some people think I'm like just one tiny rung above her in terms of like, I don't give a fuck about what I'm saying. Maybe that's true. But at least I don't film on the floor in front of my fridge. I've got that going for me. But I do think it's interesting. It's like, yeah, like maybe, maybe these dudes from the Middle East are like way, and cause they're, none of them are really like social media people. They're all really low key guys. Lindsay's husband, <laughs> Lindsay Lohan's husband, that tastes like acid coming out of my mouth. He's like in finance and really like isn't on social media. And so it's like, huh, do you think they care not at all that these chicks are famous or I don't know. It's really, it's really interesting. And Rihanna dated that Saudi billionaire for a what Was he Saudi or was he Kuwaiti? I don't know. I'm sorry. I think it was, I'm not sure. Anyway, maybe it, I, it's interesting. I don't know. What do you think the appeal is? Not for the girls. I can see what these dudes appeal is like Middle Eastern guys are hot, huge dicks, um, lots of money. I can certainly see the appeal of someone who's not big into social media. I just really wonder what the fuck these guys are getting out of it. I don't, I don't know. So some of you guys asked for the Lindsay Lohan gossip I might have. Oh my God. I could do like a three hour video. Like she, we were on like the New York scene at the same time. Like she was like in her messy heyday when I was, when I was in my messy heyday, but I mean, hers was just like light years ahead. The only way I can describe her, like she can't have nice things. She can't have nice interactions. She can't have a nice night. She can't have a nice stay at a hotel. She can't have a nice experience on a movie set. She has to break shit. She has to like reorient the energy, start a fight, be drama, scream at somebody. Like she just was like that. Like I've been to so many events with her. I know so many people in common. And like, I would watch it. I would watch it at an event. She had a VIP section, like everything was fine, champagne, blah, blah, blah. Like they're not, literally, you couldn't win this kind of experience in a fucking sweepstakes. Like there was nothing wrong. Like it was as good as life gets. And she would find a way to ruin it. 10 out of 10 times. I would watch it. I would listen to what she was saying. I would watch her pick a fight with like a waitress or one of her makeup artists or her little sister. And it's like, she wasn't happy unless everyone else is unhappy. Even just checking out of hotels. Like I, I, there were a million stories about how like she wouldn't just, you know, check out times like 11, maybe you can send it to 1 PM. No, it'd be like 5 PM security was there. She was throwing a fit. Like she couldn't just exist in any sort of healthy way. Everything had to be drama. Everything had to be drama. She fed off of it. I mean, talk about fucking cold blooded, but a lot of people are cold blooded and they feed off like compliments and praise, which I think is far healthier than feeding off of toxicity. So when you hear that she's married, got it, got it. That's what fucks me up. It's like, not that I want a husband and real talk, like I certainly wouldn't want anyone who would want her. Do you know what I mean? But I don't believe people like that really fundamentally change. I don't. I mean, maybe if you go through a ton of therapy, therapy though, we kind of think of therapy as like this enormous, huge reset button. Like I'm going to be totally different. 
therapy is like a nail file. You know, you're not, if you have to take this much off your nail, you're not using a fucking nail file. Like it's, it's going to like refine it. It's not going to fundamentally change something. Like it is kind of what it is within a certain spectrum. Obviously there's exceptions to this. There are. But it's hard for me to imagine Lindsay Lohan going through that level of personal awareness and development out of nowhere. I just, I, I don't know. I mean, from what I know about people, the best predictor of the future is the past. Best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. Anyway, so when, if, when I say it fucks me up that she's married, it's like, I feel like when I go crazy in a relationship, it's like one text that isn't crazy at all. If you guys are following me on Instagram right now, like look at what I posted about this. And it was not, this wasn't my text, but it was someone who, clearly a chick who was like, responding to a dude who was like, you ghosted me. And she's like, no, I stopped entertaining mediocrity. I was carrying the conversation. You were putting in no effort. I just, I was just done. Like that's the kind of crazy text I would send. There's no drunken outbursts. There's no fighting, screaming, hitting. There's, and it's like, I'm still out here in the trenches with you guys. Like this is fucking difficult. Like dating is difficult and she's married. But you know, every lock has a key. And like, there's a lot of dudes who like crazy chicks. There's a lot of chicks who like crazy dudes. And I think, you know, it's like, just cause he's not on social media doesn't mean he's living a life of sanity and dignity. The most demented people I know are not on social media. Like if, in some regards, like maybe putting it out there, like actually lessens the crazy, you know? But let's say for intents and purposes of this video, she really did get it together. Let's say she did, because I mean, I guess it's possible. I suppose anything's possible. How can we get our shit together and move on? How can we do this? Because in some sense, I think in order to be an interesting person, you gotta kind of have had a messy phase, right? A hoe phase a fight phase, a party phase, a cry phase, a, what, a drug phase. I mean, not like you should go out and get a drug habit to make yourself interesting, not at all. But I do think it gives you some depth and complexity. You know, it gives you empathy. It gives you a sense of how bad things can be, how good things can be. I think if you can come out the other side of it smarter, you know, pain plus reflection equals progress. So let's say Lindsay did that. How do we do this? How do we get our shit together? First of all, what is your shit? What is your shit? It's funny when you hear girls say, and I, I have said this, like, no, my ex, like he's, he just really like got his life together. He got his shit together. The first thing I say is, well, what was it? What was his shit together? What was, what was the issue? What was the problem? Like, well, he, you know, I mean, he just kind of like, he's just different. I'm like, mm, girl, you might be able to identify his problems. A, B, C, D, E, F. Can he? Has he? If not, Come on. It's like someone who's like, oh, I was so sick, but then like, I'm better now. Really? What, what medicine did you take? Um, you know, like the, the medicine, the medicines. I took them. What do you mean? What, what was, what was the problem? Like, what, what did they diagnose you with? Uh, the sicknesses. And I took the medicines. You would sound fucking crazy. And you would sound not at all like you had come out of whatever it is you were dealing with. If you cannot acknowledge something, you can't change it. This is like people 101. This is change 101. You cannot change what you refuse to acknowledge. And you might be sitting here thinking, no, I acknowledge I used to be a mess. Okay, a mess is an adjective. It isn't actually a noun or verbs. We were all a mess. Lindsay Lohan was a mess. But unless she was like, I was a mess because I had no internal self-esteem. I was a mess because I was a drug addict. I was a mess because X, Y, and Z. Like, if you're not getting really granular about that, how do you execute that? My house is a mess. Okay, well, I need to clean it. What do I need to do? I don't know. It's just a mess. What? Is it the bathroom? Is it the counters? Or do you need to swiffer the floor? Like, you can't say I'm cleaning my house if you're just like, ah, uh, I don't know where to begin. So begin. What is your mess? If you don't know where to begin, ask your friends. Sorry, somebody's texting me.
ask your friends, because baby girl, you know that they know. You know they are carrying a lust. And so much of the time, we might have like an idea of like what the, what the shit is, but we don't know where to start. Because when we're really in it, and when, we're, when we reach that point, we're like, I'm so fucking sick of this. I'm gonna tear up even talking about this because I've been in this place and I know, I know what this is like. I've been in this place with my body. I've been in this place with my relationships, with finances, with work, with where I lived. I mean, and I know that probably seems overwhelming that like if you scratch the surface, it's just this, oh, this Pandora's box of things you feel like you now have to change. But this is where I'm going with this. Ask your friends, like, what is the five alarm fire in my life right now? Like what, if they can't identify what the behavior is, at least identify the category. It's like, girl, it's your health. Like I have a friend right now and she is, she's basically drinking herself to death. She is. I give her maybe another year or two and it's, I mean, it is the most tragic thing I've ever seen. It is also not something I can fix, which is an added layer of tragedy. You know, we know that. But if she were to ask me like, what's the five alarm fire? Like, it's not your boyfriend, it's not your job situation, it's your health. Like you need to get your health in order because if you don't have your health, you have nothing. Health is wealth, right? So ask your friends, like, what is priority one? There is a priority, not multiple priorities, one priority. What is it? Singular. And maybe they're like, it's your boyfriend. Like, it's your dating life. Your dating life is a fucking garbage fire. Okay. Okay. Don't love to hear it. Don't love to hear it. Let me just say it up front. This isn't going to be fun. This is not like a fun wee exercise. Cleaning up a mess never is. Whether it's your dog barfing everywhere because you fed him too much string cheese. Not that I've done that or literally clean up your finances, your body, anything. It is hard. The acknowledgement truly is the hardest part, but that's, that's the point. Acknowledging is the hardest part. So right now, where you're at, having these conversations with your friends, this is as bad as it's gonna get. I promise, I promise, I promise. We're gonna get there. Okay, what's the five alarm fire? It's your dating life, okay? What, within that fire, what is the genesis of that fire? Where, where's the, where's the fuel source? What am I doing wrong? You're fucking guys on the first date. Okay. That's what you're doing, Shelby or whoever that you're fucking guys on the first date, like real talk. And listen, you need to cultivate a space when you ask your friends, this of complete safety. Like I will not get defensive. I will not backlash. I will not throw something back in your face and you gotta mean that. And again, this is the hardest, hardest part because we are defensive creatures because we're ego-driven creatures, right? Our head can process something. Our heart can actually move on from things fairly quickly. Our ego though, that bitch holds a grudge. She's like, oh, I'll remember you said that. I'll remember you said that. And the next time you try to wear those flare jeans, I'm gonna, I'm gonna imply you look fat. And this is where it's gonna stem from. Just letting you know. Try to set it aside. And if you need to do this via a different medium than a face-to-face conversation, do it. Like, I'm a big believer in emails and digestible pieces of information. Put it out there and be like, hey, I am really trying to get my shit together because I want X, Y, Z. I want a better body. I want to make more money out and buy a house. I want to have the love of my life come into my life. And so I need you guys, this is your, this is what you've been waiting for. I need you to tell me from your point of view, what you think I'm doing wrong. Now look, what they're saying is not like a message from from God. Like you can take these messages in, really, really think on it, and decide what rings true and what doesn't. Now hold on, hold on here. What rings true is not what feels good to say is true. Think about a job interview. So tell me, what do you think your weak points are as a potential employee. What do we all say? Oh, I just, I work too hard. I just care too much. Just too hard of a worker. We say that because it feels good to say. We like thinking of ourselves that way. We're not like, oh, I steal. And I could give a fuck about checking my email after like 7 p.m. And I will hate it here. I'm also gonna try to fuck that VP because he's hot. You're not gonna say it, right? You're gonna say what feels good to uh, your ego, okay? So what this feedback is going to come down to, actually, it's the thing you don't want to hear the most that might be the true. The thing that you immediately have a reaction. Oh, no, well, no, no, it's not. No, 
It's not that I fuck them too soon. I don't think that's it. I think, I think it's that, um, you know, like maybe we open up to, if you have an immediate clap back, you're on the right track. You have to lean into that. You have to dig into that. Think of this as pulling out a psychological splinter, right? We talk about this a lot because if you have a splinter in your arm and you just leave it there, because you're too chicken shit to just dig it out, it's gonna fester, right? It's gonna get so much worse before it gets better, it's gonna last longer, it's gonna hurt, leave a scar, bleh. We know that. Psychology is the same way. Our mind and our behaviors, same way. And if you're looking for a splinter, ooh, I know I have one, what do you do? You pat and you see where does it hurt? Okay, if it hurts there, that's probably where it is. So I'm not gonna take tweezers and tweeze around here, there's no splinter there. I gotta go where it hurts. If I really wanna make this better, I gotta follow the pain. The obstacle is the way. The pain is the cure. And if we can acknowledge this way up front before we even get into this journey, the journey will be shorter because we're not gonna like, ugh, resist it so bad. I don't wanna, I don't wanna think about this. We're gonna be like, I know that this is gonna suck. I know that I have to dig into this psychological splinter, pull it out and start to heal and move on. So when you ask for feedback from your friends, how do I get my shit together? What is the category? What is the behavior within that category? Really pay attention to what gets a reaction from you because that is the green light. Your, your ego is saying, no, that's a red light. No, that's a red light, that's not it, that's not it. But your ego can be overruled by your mind. Not in weak people, they can't do that, we can do that. So you want your ego to take a back seat to your logic and say, no, that's where the splinter is. That's where the splinter is. And I'm brave enough to pull it out. So take some time to sit with these things. Break it into digestible chunks. I'm gonna look at this email 10 minutes a day for, for a week and just, I'm just gonna ruminate on things. A cleanup process, nay, a renovation, which is what you're trying to do, takes a lot of time. It takes thoughtfulness, it takes planning, a battle. A war against yourself. What's the first thing people do when they're preparing for battle? Reconnaissance. They look, they stalk, they watch, they analyze the enemy. This is before a shot is fired, a weapon is loaded. This is what you're doing right now. You're preparing to act. You're laying that foundation. It fucking sucks. But remember how I said this is going to be the worst part? Okay. This is the worst part. If you can be brave enough to really look at what you're doing and the outcomes you're actually chasing. What do I mean by that? It's like, when we're being honest with ourselves, like are we actually chasing a healthy relationship? Are we actually chasing a good thin body? When we look at what we're doing, not what we're telling ourselves we wanna do, what we're actually boots on the ground, doing, fucking, ordering and eating. What are we, is there a big disconnect there? And if so, why? This is tricky. This is tricky. So let's get, let's get some high level psychology right now. You guys ready for this? Okay. So let's look at relationships as an example because that's why we're all here, right? I think a lot of us, People, you know, they like to assume we have a fear of failure. Oh, I'm so afraid to fail. I think a lot of us have a fear of success. I do when it comes to relationships. Like a lot of us have a fear of actually getting into a stable, healthy relationship, a marriage, a long-term thing because X, Y, Z, fill in the blank. But you might not know the blank, so I'll tell you my blank. My worst fear in life is boredom and being ordinary. Like... This goes back to my childhood. My mom traveled a lot when I was gone and I was like so bored I couldn't even breathe. Like I was, I felt trapped in like this house. Like I was just alone and I'm like, when I grow up, I'm gonna be in the center of the action. I moved to New York. I'm gonna be the person everyone wants to be around. I wanted to be famous, I'm a YouTuber, you know? My whole life is, is fleeing from boredom and ordinariness. And how I interpret happiness and stability is boredom. And so it's very hard for me to cultivate those relationships because of what I tell myself happiness means. That it means like, well, I'm not interesting anymore. I'm boring. I'm stable. Like, you know, like I like the highs and lows of dating. I like, ooh, the drama. Who does that sound like? Lindsay Lohan, right? 
So you have to get kind of deep about that. And this might relate to other categories of your life. It was hard for me to lose weight because I thought, okay, well, what if I get thin and I'm still not completely happy? Then what do I blame all my rejections on? You know, there's a lot under there. If you just kind of give yourself like the room to analyze that, you're going to be surprised at what comes up. And if you don't know, this is where therapy can come in. This is like where therapy can like, whoop, like swoop in like at the five yard line and take it to a touchdown. If, is, is that a relevant football? I don't, I don't watch football. I don't even know why I use that example. But they can come in at the last minute, not even the last minute, because you want to really develop a great rapport with therapists. But it can be only you knowing your history and really like a good doctor can like dig in and be like, oh, well, you define success as blah, blah, blah. You define failure as blah, blah, blah. And for some people, they might be completely inverted. Like boredom might mean success for somebody because maybe they've had a really chaotic life and they're like, oh, I just want to get good and bored with somebody. That sounds amazing. Me, it's the opposite, you know? So this is, you're gonna wanna use your friends to identify the splinter, and then you're gonna wanna use a psychologist or a doctor, or maybe even a really smart friend, to tell you why maybe your decisions have oriented against this outcome that you ostensibly want. Of course I wanna be thin, of course I wanna be in a happy relationship. Do you? I don't know. Maybe you're just not ready for that. Maybe you're afraid that if you shed that fat body or if you shed that bad behavior, the drinking, the drugs, if you shed the drama that you have in relationships, people will see the real you and reject the real you. There's a lot there. But I think we have come to like a good place to start, okay? What is, get my shit together. Well, what is it? Because remember how I said that's gonna be the hardest part? Now that you have identified what it is, now you can make a plan. And what that plan is going to entail is asking yourself, what is this bad behavior a getaway car from? I'm eating and keeping myself fat as a getaway car from having people see the real me and possibly rejecting the real me and not having an excuse for why guys don't like me. Well, it's because I'm 40 pounds overweight, duh. It's not like they're rejecting my real personality, my real heart, they're rejecting the shell I come in because they are so shallow, right? Lindsay Lohan's emotional getaway car, assuming she's like actually done any fucking work, whatever, is like, I'm using the drama as a getaway car from having to be a higher level version of myself, having to communicate like a grown up, having to really put that work in and not respond in this childish animalistic way. The getaway car from dealing with my family issues. Hey, I don't have to deal with my family if I'm dealing with a court case. Hey, I don't have to deal with my deep-seated childhood trauma if I'm, you know, on the front page of a magazine and I'm trying to sue them and blah, blah, blah. You know, like I'm setting other fires that seem more easy to put out rather than this raging inferno behind me. Raging inferno. But, oh, oh, there's a fire over here. Okay? So ask yourself, how has this bad behavior actually been serving me? How have I been using this behavior to get out of responsibility in another category? Again, I told you, this acknowledgement, difficult. It's difficult. A lot of people don't do this. I mean, not a lot. The vast majority of human beings on planet Earth, I would say 99.9%, they don't ask themselves these questions. But we're not just one percenters, we're one percent of one percenters. We are the leaders and we're the shapers of tomorrow, not just in the world, in our own lives, first and foremost. Why? Because we are fucking brave. We're brave enough to do this work. We're brave enough to say like, this is, this is gonna be an ouchie. I'm gonna pull this splinter out, it's gonna be an ouchie. But that's all right. Pain is temporary. The results could last forever. Impossible is nothing. Pain is nothing. I like, I like the pain. The pain is a green light. That means I'm on the track to growth and getting better. Growing pains are a phrase I know. That's a phrase I know. That's a phrase I fucking love because I'm willing to be in pain if it's in service of growth. Right now, I'm just in pain for no reason. I am just pain and drama and pain and drama. Loop, 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 loop. If I'm going to be miserable, it's going to be so much more finite and in service of something better. And I'm strong enough to see that and I'm strong enough to do it. So you're gonna figure out what your shit is. You're gonna figure out how have you been using this to avoid dealing with the raging inferno behind you. 
And then you're going to deal with that inferno. And then you're not going to need to start these small fires. There's no fires in your life. You don't need them. You can sit inside your life. You can show people the real you. You can move forward healthier. And you can be the person that you know you were meant to be. It really, it might be a little painful, but it honestly isn't going to be as hard as you think. It really isn't. I want to know your thoughts on this. Did Lindsay's marriage... Yeah. Tell me what, what category, like what box do you see someone else checking that like fucks you up? Like, what is it? And just a reminder, sign up for Alpha Academy, the sexy sessions. Tickets are just 10 bucks. You can join. We're going to be doing so much content. I, oh, we're really going to get into it. You're going to come out of this an absolute sexual weapon. You are nothing is ever going to be the same. It's going to be fantastic because you know what? I'm good at sex and I should be having more of it. Also, come with me to Italy. We're going next um, April. Go ahead and sign up at the link down below. You can also sign up for Alpha Academy right down there in the show notes and I will see you later, shalligators. Bye.